Hi, everybody. Welcome. So it's been a while since I've done a live stream that is available to the public. Uh, this live stream will focus on how to collect a bank of real world examples to help you with your essays in IB economics. Uh, so let's get started, shall we? All right, so as I said, I will focus in this live stream on how do you build a bank of real world examples to help you with your IB economics essays. Uh, before I get started, I want you to check the links in the video description. Okay, you'll find the link to the blog post that I'm going to refer to. It's also a blog post on my blog. Uh, you will find the link to the subject guide. If you don't already have this IB subject guide, I don't know, like, how are you going through the subject without the subject guide? Um, and you can find links to become a member to access more exclusive content and links to buy me a coffee if you want to say thanks for this video. Um, if you want to say thanks for this video. Also, simple things you can do is like the video, share the video with your friends, subscribe to the channel. All right, so let's get started. So as I said, the focus of today's live stream is how do you build a bank of real world examples to help you with your essays and IB economics. You grab the subject guide, step one, okay? Now, in the subject guide, there are this thing, this, there are these things called assessment objectives, okay? A-O, right? I am going to draw your attention to what we call AO3. So basically, AO1, these are things like knowledge and understanding. So defining, describing, and so on. AO2, application analysis, like analyzing, commenting, distinguishing, explaining. AO3 is the synthesis and evaluation. The AO3 assessment objective is where you need to have real world examples. OK, this is the trick that I teach my students. OK, anything. So AO3 type questions will ask you things like compare, compare and contrast, discuss, evaluate, recommend to what extent. OK, these are the types of questions you will see in paper one, part B, paper two, part G. And for HL students, paper three, part B, the policy recommendation essay. OK. You will need solid real world examples for paper one, part B, and paper three, part B for HL students only. In paper two, part G, you need to evaluate, but you don't need real world examples in paper two because the real world example you will draw from the case study given. So, how do you use this knowledge now, this understanding of AO3? Well, if you scroll down and you look at, say, let's start with microeconomics, because the first two units, 1.1 and 1.2, they don't have any AO3. They only have AO2s and AO4s. So if you look at microeconomics, in the demand unit, it's all AO2 and AO4, right? In the supply unit, it's the same. In the equilibrium unit, it's the same. You start to see AO3 for the first time in behavioral economics, okay? Hi, Rashid. How are you? So behavioral economics for HL students, this is the first time you come across AO3. Whenever you see AO3, you are expected to be able to synthesize, evaluate using real-world examples. So HL students should collect examples of rational consumer choice and behavioral economics. Um, if you look in the description below, there's a playlist, and I have a video for real-world examples for behavioral economics. Um, you should also have real-world examples of choice architecture and nudge theory, and real-world examples of alternative business objectives. That's for HL students. Well, what about SL students as well? Well, the first time SL students encounter AO3 is the importance of PED for firms and government decision-making. Okay, one really good real world example that would satisfy this is looking at an indirect tax on a product with inelastic demand. The easiest example is cigarettes. Find a news article about a real world example on cigarettes in a specific country or a state if you live in the United States. Okay, once you have that, 
you can use that real world example for discussions of importance of PED for government decision making, and you can use it in other units like government intervention, like market failure when you're discussing demerit goods. So you don't have to collect a completely different real world example for every single AO3. Some news articles or some real world examples can actually target many of those learning outcomes at the same time. So you have to be a little bit efficient. You want to work smarter, not work harder. So remember, a really good news article about an indirect tax on cigarettes in a specific country or province or state will help you with this um, importance of PED for government decision making. Okay, this is the first AO3 that both SL and HL students encounter. And then you scroll down, you see AO3 again, importance of YED, but that's HL. Okay, you see uh, PES doesn't have. And then you start to see a lot of the AO3s from 2.7 onwards. So, for example, government intervention 2.7, you see AO3 here. Government intervention in markets, consequences for markets and stakeholders. So you need a solid real world example of a price ceiling, a solid real world example of a price floor, a solid real world example of an indirect tax, especially if it's an indirect tax on cigarettes, which is a demerit good that has inelastic demand. You're basically targeting all of these learning outcomes and you have a solid you need to have a solid real world example of a subsidy. So these are four topics that you need to have solid real world examples all right and then you enter market failure this is where real world examples become really important so here you see strengths and limitations of government policies to correct externalities and approaches to managing common pool resources you see ao3 here and the importance of international cooperation ao3 the first time you see them in the market failure unit okay so how do you interpret this well you should have a solid real world example of positive externalities of production, negative externalities of production, positive externalities of consumption, negative externalities of consumption. If you have a real world example for cigarettes, you've already got negative externalities of consumption and demerit goods. Try to find a real world example of positive externalities of production. I've got some in my playlist, which is in the video description below. Try to find a solid real world example of negative externalities of production, especially if it's something to do with carbon emissions and a carbon tax. If you have a real world example of a carbon tax, you also have something for managing common pool resources. Or if you have a real world example of a tax on, say, fishermen to prevent overfishing. Again, those real world examples you can see in my playlist in the video description below. Okay, so remember my strategy for collecting real world examples, and this is what I teach my students. This video isn't about content, it's actually about how to basically interpret the IV economic subject guide so that you can uh, know what is required before you enter the exam. Anytime you encounter AO3 in the syllabus, you need to be able to evaluate using real world examples okay now don't feel the need to collect a different real world example for each and every one you don't have to because some real world examples will actually be able to meet the requirements of several so um, if you have a real world example of a carbon tax that can be used to for common pool resources essays it can be used for indirect tax as a form of government intervention it can be used for price elasticity of demand because the demand for uh, fossil fuels is inelastic, right? So what you're doing is the same real world example can um, satisfy the requirements of several topics in the syllabus. Now, I'm not going to go through everything else, but remember, AO3, that's the signal that you should have a solid real world example. Now, where do you find these solid real world examples? Well, number one, whatever textbook you're using, will help. All textbooks right now for IB economics have some sort of what they call real life case studies. These are real world examples. Another simple um, strategy is just to go, okay, just to go to Google, all right? So I have in my blog here, um, and the link for this blog is uh, in uh, the video description below, all right? 
I want you to come up with a list of keywords, okay? List of keywords to search online that relate to the concepts under these assessment objectives. Use keywords that can be found in the news. For example, if you're looking for a real world example of an indirect tax, nobody in the news, no news reporter writes indirect tax, right? Think of terms that might be used in the news, like cigarette tax, like sugar tax for taxes on sugary beverages, like carbon tax, okay? Type each keyword in the Google search engine and then click on the news tab. When you Google something, you will see a news tab. Click on the news tab. You will see all the news articles that are published recently in the order that they were published. So most recent to least recent. Remember, some articles will be useful for a number of keywords and concepts. For example, and I said that earlier, an article about a cigarette tax can be used for essays about a variety of topics like indirect taxes, price elasticity of demand, market failure, negative externalities of consumption, and demerit votes. So I have a real world example that targets all of these five topics or themes. Okay. Now, I'm on my iPad and the students in my school are on my iPad. So pick an article for each keyword, okay, that relates to an AO3 objective. Save the article. As soon as you have the article, save it as a PDF or screenshot it because articles sometimes disappear off the internet. Sometimes, sometimes articles are only available for a period of time and then they go behind the subscription wall or whatever. Save it as a PDF, put it in a folder called RWEs, real world examples. I tell my students to use simple labels. So try to have an indirect tax, RWE, subsidy, RWE, price floor, RWE, minimum wage, RWE, monopoly, RWE. Now, each screenshot article, you should be able to summarize in a sentence, one or two sentences that answers the five W's in one H, right? Who, when, where, what, why, and how. So for example, I gave my students an article that I summarized. I said, okay, in November, 2021, the Biden administration raised the taxes on vapes to eliminate the price differential with regular cigarettes in an effort to discourage youth vaping. Did you see how I summarized the article using the five W's and 1H, who, the Biden administration, where, the United States, when, November 2021, what did they do? They raised the taxes on vapes because vapes were much cheaper than regular cigarettes. Why? To discourage youth vaping. How? Raising the tax on vapes will eliminate this price differential. Okay? Make sure you can discuss and evaluate when presenting arguments supported by your RWE. Uh, real world example. Think about counter arguments and evidence that challenges perspectives presented in your essay. Make sure you look at short term as well as long term implications. Try to also see the RWEs from the perspectives of different stakeholders. Who are the winners? Who gains versus who are the losers? Who loses? I would also recommend looking at the economic theories that support those RWEs and think about how things can often differ in practice from how they are in theory. Remember, not everything in real life fits the textbook. Theory and practice don't always match, and that's okay. That's part of evaluation as well, okay? So remember, you've got two whole years to do all of this, and I am helping you with all of this. I publish uh, a real-world example series. You can find the link to the playlist in the video description below. So in the video description below, you can find a link to the subject guide. If you don't already have the subject guide, you can find a link to um, uh, if you want to say thanks, uh, you can buy me a coffee. Um, I always appreciate those. Uh, they also encourage me and motivate me to keep producing good content. You can find a link to uh, becoming a member of my YouTube channel. Becoming a member of my YouTube channel gives you access to exclusive content, including reviewing the entire syllabus. I review the entire syllabus one unit each week until the uh, May exams, I will have refused, reviewed the entire syllabus. Uh, so these are all ways you can support the channel. Um, if you don't want to spend any more money, you can just like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel. These little things that cost you no money and they're just clicks, okay, actually benefit me a lot. Um, please, if you have any questions, drop them in the uh, video comment section below. I answer most, if not all, of the questions that I get asked. And remember, 
um, you, you've got two years, I'm assuming you're at the beginning, or even if you are a year away from your exam, you've got a while to build this bank of real world examples. So you want to be a little bit more efficient, but you want to space them out. You don't want to panic right before your IB exam in May and be like, oh my God, I have no real world examples. That's going to be really overwhelming. Watch my playlist below. I promise you my playlist below with the real world example series will help you with a lot of the real world examples that you need to collect. Rashid, you are more than welcome. Um, thank you, Rashid. Rashid, where um, where are you emailing? Uh, Rashid, you're emailing me from Egypt. You have the Egyptian flag. I just realized I'm Egyptian as well. Uh, my family is Egyptian. Uh, we don't have to have that conversation because of safety issues. You don't have to reveal your identity or your location. But Rashid, um, thank you very much for joining me. I hope you found this useful. Everybody else who didn't join me live, I hope you find this video useful. Remember, check the links in the video description below. Become a channel member. Subscribe to the channel. Um, uh, buy me a coffee. It's a, one of the nicest ways to say thanks. I've had um, over 250 coffees, I think, so far purchased for me. And they always, coffee's good for me. Coffee keeps me awake. Um, so that's good. Uh, Rashid, nice to meet you as well. Uh, have a great rest of your week. Weekend. Have a great rest of your week, and I look next live stream. All right. I hope you found this video useful. Bye.